Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all keeping safe and well as best you can in these uncertain times. I know for many of my disabled and visually impaired friends it is more difficult. I know it's a big struggle for many of you. So you have my sympathies for that. I know that Emily at Fashion Eister has done a video on her channel about how blind people are coping in the situation. There's some interesting points she's making in there. I know there's a petition for blind people to get access to online delivery slots for their groceries, which is a great idea. I'll link to that in the description as well. Do go and sign that. And yeah, I just hope that everyone's able to get the support they need, whether it's from family, friends, neighbours, online services, charities, mutual aid groups in your local area and so on. There is the support out there, but it's not always easy to coordinate it with the people who need it. Um, so I hope you are able to get the help you need if you need it. For Mum and I, we're doing OK, thankfully. You know, I've been able to keep us stocked up. We've been able to get online deliveries, fortunately. I know many people aren't so lucky. And I have been able to go out to the shops as well. Um, thankfully, they're now enforcing social distancing rules and the panic buying seems to have died down. So that's good. So yeah, so far, so good. We're doing OK. Um, in terms of my favourites videos, therefore, obviously I'm not going out anywhere, so I thought I'd change things up a bit and do smaller, more regular videos. So perhaps every fortnight, maybe every week if I've got enough to talk about, but every fortnight might be easier. We'll see how it goes, how much I have to talk about and how I feel and stuff. Um, but I thought if I do smaller, more regular videos, it'll be easier for me to edit them and publish them more quickly. So we'll see how it goes, but this is the first video I'm going to do. And I'm just going to just run through things that I've been enjoying recently in case there's anything that interests you particularly that you might want to check out yourself. So, yeah, let's just crack straight on with it, I think. So the first big job I did was upgrading my Mac computer to the Catalina operating system. I always wait a little bit before I do these things anyway because there's no rush to do it immediately and it's nice to give them a chance to iron out any bugs and things like that. And it's working fine, you know, the upgrade went fine without any issues and I'm using it much the same as I did before. But there are a few little bits and pieces that have come to my notice as first impressions. The first is that accessibility has been improved again as per usual. Um, it doesn't really affect me in a big way, but um, the invert colours feature that I use heavily to make sure I have dark backgrounds with light text on, so I don't have like glary white backgrounds instead, and um, that's been upgraded so it's more kind of smart in effect, so it doesn't invert pictures and videos, you know, because obviously they look weird if you invert the colours for those. The only issue with that smart mode is that it doesn't always work perfectly on every program. So in the music app, for example, the sidebar ends up with dark text on a dark background, which is no good for me. So it doesn't always work perfectly for that. There's also a dark mode you can use as well. That kind of changes the colours of toolbars and menus and windows and things like that to make them darker with light text, which again is quite useful, but again doesn't work for everything. So like websites still have light backgrounds, for instance, unless they've been specifically coded to work with the dark mode. Some websites have dark modes of their own anyway, like Twitter and YouTube, but a lot don't. So in those cases, you still have light backgrounds even with dark mode turned on. So for me, what I found is best is to tick the classic invert box just to use invert colours for everything. So even if I want to watch photos and videos, I have to turn that off again. But the keyboard shortcut's really quick and easy, so I don't mind doing that. That's absolutely fine. And when using things like Twitter and YouTube, I use those websites built in dark mode or night mode, and it works fine. So I've gone back to the classic mode, but I can see how the smart version would work for some people. So it just depends on how you use the computer. And then the other big accessibility feature, perhaps the more major one, is voice control. Um, that is completely new in Catalina. And it's not something I would necessarily need to use myself, but it's something I'm going to start having a little play with. I've had a little look at it so far, and it's got some quite handy features in there. You know, you can get numbers up for every element on the, sc on the screen. So you can sort of say, you know, click three or ten or whatever. And you can also say open this app or click this icon or menu or something. So it is quite useful. I'm going to have a little play with it further because it might be useful for my mum to use on the laptop we've got. So, yeah, uh, voice control is a nice addition. And I think in conjunction with voiceover, that could be very useful for visually impaired people, as well as people who have dexterity issues and can't perhaps use the keyboard and mouse and things. And then the other big change is that iTunes has been split up. So you would have heard me just say that there's a music app because they've now split everything from iTunes into music, podcasts, books and TV apps, which is great and it all worked fine. All of my media files have been split correctly between all of those different apps and they're all easy enough to use. I mean, the music app is basically iTunes without the clutter anymore, so that's nice and easy to use now. The issue comes with audiobooks. You know, many people have had problems here. The issue I have uh, is that you can't edit 
any of the information or look at the individual tracks that make up the books anymore. So if you've gone to the effort of, you know, maintaining your collection very carefully, you know, you've ripped books from CDs and downloaded things from various places and edited the information so it's exactly the way you want, you can't do that anymore. So like many people, I have basically just taken my books out of the app, I found where they're stored on the Mac, taken them out, stored them in the Finder so they're separate. Some people are using apps called Plex and Prolog to organise their books instead. Some people are importing them back into the Music app now. I'm just keeping them in the Finder like many people. It's easy enough to organise things in a folder structure there but hopefully that's something Apple can fix because they really let themselves down on the audiobooks front there I think they're relying on the fact that people are going to be downloading books from their store or Audible that's kind of their focus but they've kind of forgotten about everything else and they've forgotten that people can have huge audiobook collections that they've built up over the years so that's something they really need to work on and then the other big addition to Catalina though that moves me on to the next topic is Apple Arcade which is all about gaming I haven't really done any gaming for a long time because I've had plenty of other things to do, but now I've got the opportunity, I'm kind of exploring it a bit more. So Apple Arcade is a subscription service um, where you pay $4.99 a month and you get access to about 100 games without any adverts, no in-app purchases, anything like that. And there's a free trial for a month to see what you think of it. So I've signed up for the free trial and the first game I played was Spider, where you control an intelligent mechanical spider that has to sabotage evil plans by an organisation called Sin. And you know it's simple enough to get into, you know, the controls are simple, you use the W, A, S and D key to move the spider around, space to interact with things, and you can hold down control to move the camera around with your mouse. So it's nice and easy to use, and the graphics are beautiful as well. And you can climb up, over, and under things as well as walk across them because you're a spider. So you can got quite a bit of freedom of movement in your environment. I mean, it is sort of a linear path overall, but you've still got to explore the wider environment of the space you're in every time to kind of solve all the puzzles and things. There's only six levels, but they're all quite extensive. So it took me a little while to get through it. I spent a few days just going through all the different levels. I can't play games for too long at once because my eyes get tired so I spent a few days going through it and completed it all I got stuck now and again of course as you do but I didn't have to look up any help to get through each level I just kind of stepped away thought about things come back and yeah just carried on so I really enjoyed that game it was really nice to play that um, it's not going to be any good if you're visually impaired like more severely than I am you do have to have some level of sight to be able to do it and I suspect that's going to be true of most if not all the games in the arcade but I'm glad I was able to do it, able to play that. So yeah, I can recommend Spider if you want to check out Apple Arcade. And I'm going to check out some other games as I go along as well. And I'll review those in future posts. And then on the Amazon Echo Dot that I've got, I've played a game called Escape the Room. You know, I had planned to go to a couple of escape rooms this year, but obviously I can't do that now. So this looked like a fun alternative. And it was, it was good fun. I did need a few hints along the way, especially in the big spaceship level. And I needed one clue in the garage level as well, because the answer to the toolbox is a bit obscure and that's the problem some of the answers are a little bit random as to where you find them so my advice is just listen to everything you hear explore everything make a note of all the details I was typing notes as I went along and then you'll be able to look through everything and think okay that might be a clue that might be a clue it really did help to take notes so yeah I really enjoyed that it did make me think uh, it's good to keep my brain busy like that and uh, I know there's an escape the room 2 skill as well so I'm probably going to have a go at that at some point point. and then in terms of stuff I've been watching on TV I'm still working my way through the blu-ray box set of the X files that I mentioned in my uh, previous favourites post for February and March. I'm just about to finish season four on that. I'm also continuing to watch season five of Outlander on Amazon and series six of The Flash has resumed on Sky One as well. This episode and its return was part of a crossover story with four other shows in the Arrowverse as they call this whole universe that the shows are set in. So I haven't seen the other four shows but I saw enough of it to understand things from The Flash's perspective and the second half of the series is kind of a new story arc so it gets back to normal basically so I'm looking forward to that. And then in terms of comedy I'm enjoying the new sitcom Mr. Winner on BBC Two which is a bit of a farcical comedy basically about a guy who gets into lots of awkward and difficult situations that he has to try and get out of and it's kind of fun to see him do that it's a bit like kind of some others do have him you know he's a bit like frank spencer he means well but just keeps making a cock up of everything so yeah it's quite funny um spencer jones is good in that there's also been a new edition of qixl this week which has been good and season 18 of family guy has also resumed on itv2 which is good that's the season that will be released on dvd as season 20 at a later date because of the way they're numbering things and then another show that mum and i are watching at the moment is richard osmond's house of games um, which we hadn't actually seen before but we found it on the iplayer and we're kind of just working through through it now so that's quite good you know the nice um, fun little games you know it really does make you think not just about the answers to the questions but having to kind of do different things with them like thinking about opposites or smashing answers together and things like that so it's a nice little twist on the whole quiz show format in terms of things to listen to on weekdays i'm listening to the absolute radio podcast from the dave berry breakfast show and home time with bush and richie because there's some good banter and laughs on there and then on my twitter and facebook pages at the moment i'm going through the 30 day song challenge that the charity victor have posted as part of their 20 ways to spend time at home and stay in touch 
such. And that list also includes a list of bloggers on there, of which I am one, which is very kind of them. So thank you to them for that. So yeah, as I like music, going through this 30-day song challenge is quite fun because you have to think of a different song for each topic. So follow me on social media, on my Twitter and Facebook to see what I'm choosing, and I'll post the list at the end of the month once I've gone through them all. And then finally, to mention a bunch of online videos that you might want to check out, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber's got a new channel up on YouTube called The Shows Must Go On. Every Friday night at 7pm, he's releasing a show in full for 48 hours, so you can watch it over the weekend. Uh, this weekend, we've had Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, which was fun. Next weekend, it's Jesus Christ Superstar, and there'll be other shows coming along after that. So that's very generous. The shows are not audio-described or captioned, though, so you're going to find it difficult if you need that. Various other theatres are also putting out stream shows as well. There's a lockdown resources page on my blog, which has links to articles talking about that and various other things if you want ideas of things to do, so check that out too. And there's there's a friend of mine called Dean Dunbar who runs a website called Extreme Dreams and he's a blind extreme sports enthusiast so he's had loads of exciting adventures. He's amazing. He's a really funny guy as well. And so during the lockdown he's sharing some of the stories of his adventures. So do go and check them out on his channel. Uh, it's DinoD69, the channel on YouTube. But his website is extremedreams.co.uk so do go and check him out. As a Queen fan, I'm really enjoying the podcast series called Finding Freddy on the Freddie Mercury channel. It's basically various people from Freddie's life talking about him. So we've had interviews about Barcelona, for example, recently. He's worked with Montrac and YA, and there's various other things they're discussing on there. So do check out that series. They're releasing new episodes of that regularly. And Queen guitarist Brian May is also posting videos on his Instagram and YouTube pages, including micro concertos and other little bits of chat. So do go and follow Brian May as well if you're a Queen fan. He's posting some lovely videos there. Jimmy Carr is posting a little tiny quiz of the lockdown every day with various general knowledge questions and other fun questions to keep your brain busy. And there's a compilation of the first week if you've missed that so far. So check out Jimmy Carr's channel because he's releasing videos every day for that. Taskmaster is also going on at the moment. They're providing home tasks for people to do. So Alex Horn is posting videos on YouTube telling you what the tasks are each day. And then there's another video going up later where Greg Davis is reviewing the tasks and you're getting to see everyone's entries and people are being so creative. It's amazing. And there's some very funny entries in there so do check that out on youtube and if you want to take part then go to the taskmaster page on twitter as well and you can take part join in see if you can get on the leaderboard all the stations, um, they're doing some live streams every week called Don't Panic Stations. Um, Jeff and Vicky are doing this to keep them and us entertained, and they're great fun. Um, on Saturday nights, they're doing an hour from 8pm, and the most recent live stream was a London Underground quiz, which I didn't do particularly well on, but it was still fun. And then on Wednesdays, they're starting to do a shorter half-hour slot during the day for families and children, so they're encouraging people to get creative. So that's good of them to do that as well, because um, Vicky's used to doing stuff like that in her job, so you know they're, they're really good at that. You can rewatch some of the streams on their channel as well on the play list not every single one they had technical issues with the very first stream and in this fourth stream Vicky accidentally swore so they had to take it down uh, that was funny at the time though but yeah it is really fun that they're doing that and in terms of other live streams, Spencer Kelly from BBC's Click program, which is their technology news program, he's been doing live streams every day at 12.30 on his uh, Periscope, which is also on Twitter as well, having just a great chat with people, having a laugh and things, and keeping us up to date with what he's doing with his work. And then they've just broadcast a 20th anniversary special of Click, looking back at the past two decades of the show, lots of the highlights and things, which is fun. So you can find that on the iPlayer, of course. So yeah, there's plenty I'm watching online. There's obviously other bits and pieces that I find on YouTube as I go along as well, because it always recommends random things. But those are the things that stand out that I feel I can particularly recommend and I'll recommend other things that catch my eye going forward and of course if there's anything you recommend I should watch then by all means let me know. And that's it. That's all I have to mention for now. I hope you enjoyed that and found it interesting. Um, as I say, these videos are going to be shorter and snappier than they used to be because there's not so much to mention and I want to keep them as easy to edit and publish as possible. So do subscribe to my channel for more videos that I release of this nature going forward. And also make sure you subscribe to my blog as well. Make sure you follow me there because I'll be posting things there that I don't talk about here, which is kind of normal. There are things I post about on my blog that I don't mention in the videos. For example, recently I posted about 10 tips for looking after disabled and special needs children. It was a guest post written by someone else. It was a paid advertisement, to be absolutely clear and honest. But you know, even though I've never allowed a paid post before of that nature, the content is very fitting with the rest of the kind of themes of my blog. So it did fit in well. I have had very good feedback on it. So do go and check that out as well. There might be something useful in there for you to take away. So yeah, do follow my blog and my YouTube channel and so social media as well of course to see what I uh, post as we go along and above all you know please stay safe and well I hope everyone continues to do okay as best you can in the current circumstances so yeah take care thank you for watching and I'll see you for another video very soon bye